Um, welcome everybody to the Art of Printing Comics panel. And what we're doing today is we've brought together a panel of artists and publishers who create really exquisite handcrafted publications. Um, these are, are comics that, in my opinion, are really on par with artist books. They're just um, really designed um, very thoughtfully, um, and I, I, I really love them. And, um, these, these aren't the kind of comics you can run to Kinko's and just dash off or even um, send out overseas and, and print uh, thousands of copies really quick and cheap. These are um, really beautifully crafted artist books. And we're gonna look at um, some examples of that, look a little closer at the, um, how these books are produced, um, the, um, how they're printed, and, but more importantly, I think, the, the thoughtfulness that goes into making these publications. Um, why make this a four color book rather than a two color book? Why um, print this um, eight and a half by 11 rather than a, a quarter size of that? Um, and how do these choices help us be better storytellers? Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all of that. And um, before I get too further in, um, let me int introduce myself. My name is Robin Chapman. Um, I'm a cartoonist and a, <laughs> and a publisher, um, and I run a website called The Tiny Report, so I, I care very deeply about um, small press comics. That's, that's kind of what I focus on with The Tiny Report. And here we have Natalie Anderson, Chris Mackay, Elliot Alfredius, yeah. and uh, Patrick Crotty. And I'll, I'll introduce them um, in more depth later when we, we talk about their work. Um, and if you're familiar with their work, you probably notice we have a lot of risograph printers on the panel today. And we definitely are gonna be talking a lot about um, risograph, but this isn't a risograph workshop. We're not gonna get too much into the nitty gritty of how a risograph machine works or where you can buy one, that sort of stuff. We're gonna be talking about sort of the art of printing and the choices we make. Having said that, before we get too far in, I thought we should take a moment to um, at least explain what a risograph machine is if, for those who aren't familiar with it. And I was hoping that um, Elliot and Patrick could, could do that since you guys have a risograph machine and um, that you print your books on. Uh, yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, what is a risograph machine and how is it different from a Xerox machine? Who, who should, you, you can go ahead. We can we do can every other word, yeah. right? right yeah. <laughs> no. um, and so also, Chris, feel free to interject. I have one too. Yeah, because, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and also, um, Chris and I were actually teaching risograph stuff at SVA. Uh, and I still am. And so now he's the I'm artist in residency. residency. Yeah, yeah so residency we all know a lot about them, but <laughs> uh, we've we've had it for the longest time. Uh, but uh, can I, I'm just curious, just a raise of a hand of how many people actually do know what a risograph is in this room? Okay, so like a third, a quarter. Okay, so a risograph is uh, it's uh, a machine that looks like a photocopier. Um, kind of like anything that you would find in any office. Um, but instead of using laser and heat um, and like dust stuff to print onto the paper, it uses ink. So um, the easiest thing is kind of to explain it as a combination between a screen printing technique mixed with a photocopier. So if you know how to use a photocopier by pressing buttons like how many prints you want to make and pressing start and stop, uh, that's all you kind of need to know. Uh, it's not, you know, anything special. Um, just because somebody makes a RZA book doesn't make them better than anybody else. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you see somebody selling a book that says this is RZA book, then it's like, it don't like, don't uh, put it above anything else. It's the content. Um, but anyways, so these machines, the thing that's really cool about them is that you can get them for really cheap. Um, there are a lot of used machines that are available. So the thing that has happened. Um, within the past 10 years, a lot of small publishers that uh, don't want to do offset printing because they don't have enough books to make, um, they can get a hold of these risograph machines and it gives them a lot more options than digital printing and you have a lot more control over what you're printing and you can have a lot of really interesting colors and, uh, and formats to work with. So, so it is really fun. Uh, I think I maybe missed a few things. Yeah, I think the thing, oh, Jesus, too close. <laughs> uh, I think the thing that you missed is that you can only print with one color at a time. Unless you have a new one, but yeah. Yeah, I guess I, you can print oh. with two colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like color drums, so you send like from the what a computer or whatever. It's always like black and white files, and then you just choose what color you want to print in by like changing the color drums. Yeah, they, it comes with these big drums that you put an ink canister in, and then the paper goes. 
there's a really big drums, but it's like you're like picking something up like this <laughs> and then like putting it in the machine. Very tech yeah. <laughs> it's cool. But it yeah. feels you cool. Really <laughs> you get kind of, yeah, you get like a little strong. <laughs> like your back gets better or worse. You kind of bend with your knees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is also the reason why like some people are like, oh, I have so many books that are purple, for oh, example, yeah. is because they only have like a purple drum. <laughs> so I might be, I, I know I'm oversimplifying it, but if you can think of a sort of like a Xerox machine where you can print in red ink and then print in blue ink. Mm. And then you can sometimes layer those on top. Like you could do one color, two color, really it's how much work you want to put into and how much ink you have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it takes like the screen printing technique, um, you have a lot of the similar mindset when working with it, but it takes away the time that you spend and the mess of screen prints. So you have the option to experiment and work a whole lot faster and still have this option to just use different colors instead of black and white. Um, or and instead of doing digital printing where you have the four colors, the CMOI, K printing. And with it prints, Rizzo you it can print. so fast. Yeah, yeah. and it's really fast. And it can fit in your apartment if you have an apartment or like mm -hmm. a closet or whatever. Okay, so let's let's move on um, to the panelists and their publications. So I asked each panelist to pick their three fa favorite publications, and we're going to share them with you and get a little um, in-depth detail about them. So first, we're going to start with um, Natalie Anderson. And let me tell you a little bit more about Natalie. She lives in Brooklyn, New York. She went to school at Ringling College, um, and she did a comic as her thesis, and she's been doing um, small edition comics ever since. She, like, I think it was mentioned that she's an artist in residence at the SVA Riza Lab. Yeah, I just and, uh, yeah. And in your own words, um, you're kind of new to comics, but you've really created a lot in the last three years, and yeah. really great comics. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And um, so the first one we're gonna show, okay, this one is called Swim Team Superstar. This is an SPX debut. And let me just give you a rundown of the spe specifications. It's a 16-page risograph. It's an edition of 200, so she printed 200 of them. So it's a one wow. color, and the size, it's a letter page folded in half, so half letter. Yeah. And so Natalie, can you just um, give us a little more information about this publication? Anything you want to share? Any challenges she ha you had? Any thought process you had? Yeah. So I, I created the cover a lot earlier than I created the interior. Um, I was really excited about just like doing a swim team story because <laughs> growing up I hated and I loved swim team at the same time. Um, and I wanted to do something that was like super thick blue or like the value was very dark. Um, and with Rizzo that's like very hard as well. It, I maybe shouldn't have done it <laughs> um, because it, it, got, it gets really messy um, quickly and it can not feed properly if it's too dark on the outside. <laughs> um, so I, it was a labor of love, this cover. Um, and uh, I used two colors uh, for the cover. I've got a little bit of yellow going through. So you've got, you see it in the star really, but I've got a grid in the back that has a little bit of yellow that makes a nice green um, line. And I've got a gradient interior, just like a title page or like, you know, extra page. Um, and then it's just a story about you know, how fun and crazy and kind of magical a uh, swim team is in the summer and just like childlike um, mentality and, uh, but also hating it at the same time <laughs> you have to wake up at seven and <laughs> you have to learn how to do flip turns and get water off your nose. And, um, but, and then in the end, I just wanted to talk about like, oh yeah, this is something that I loved as a kid, but then in, in no way do I do it at all anymore. And, um, and I miss it, but I'm the, like I did a little bio on the back, like oh and today she's a composer, and she doesn't have a membership to the pool, <laughs> and she's she just likes to t like make music, and it's yeah that's all. <laughs> and let's move on to the your next choice. Um, so this one is called Big Sister. It's a 14-page risograph. It's a two-color an edition of 150, and this is a bit smaller, right? It's a quarter yeah. size? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, this, this is the thumb size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could, t could you tell us a little bit more about this and maybe your, your thought process, like how you decided two color for this and? Yeah, yeah, I decided two color for this one because I really liked the purple that um, the blue and the red created. Um, and I wanted to do a, like, try out a bunch of gradients with the paper that I was using. So this paper is um, just like, a, what is it, like, 
just a Canson like t uh, 25 pound, and it has like a nice, it's called natural white, it's just <laughs> natural white thin paper that kind of like with a gradient made it feel like a Japanese book or like wood print, wood block print, um, if you can see it. Um, and uh, yeah, just adding the, the blue and purple, or the blue and the red together um, was really pleasant, and this was my first like blue and red. I'd been working with um, some other uh, Chris's risograph printer that you you also had. You didn't you have blue? I had blue. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first that time was, that I was that's able why to. It was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was blue, blue, and now everything I do is in blue. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so so I was really excited to work in blue and red, um, and to make those make those uh, gradients and those purples, um, and especially in the cover, like going from this like thick paper the thick cover cardstock paper to the interior um, was just like a really, it looks very nice together um, with just like a slight yellow uh, and then, yeah, the thick. Anyway. Great. <laughs> okay, and so the last one for Natalie, um, this is Lemon and Ket. This one is actually published by Piao Studios, um, Patrick and, and Elliot at the end. Um, and so Lemon and Ket, is a 40-page risograph. It's orange and blue ink, with plus a yellow added for the cover. And um, th th the size is A5 custom, which I'm not sure exactly what that means um, in American standards. Um, uh -oh. it's <coughs> Can we do a quick explanation on that paper? Sure. So uh, for risograph, since it's like a photocopying type machine, uh, it only accepts, uh, you can't print whatever size. You can't put in like a really, really big sheet of paper. So the largest sizes for the US are about, what is it called, tabloid? Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. tabloid, and in Europe we have A sizes. So A3 is about a tabloid size, and the way it works is that when you fold it, it becomes the next size. So if you fold an A3, you have an A4, mm -hmm. so that is about a letter size, mm -hmm. and then when you fold it in half, it's an A5. So, so the A5 is about, uh, let me say, like this big. Okay, got um, it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Natalie, can you tell us a little bit more, more about this? This is a longer one. Yeah, this is, yeah, being 40 page pages, it was um, more exciting to be able to do like a longer adventure mm -hmm. story, and especially for Piao, who like do a lot of adventure stuff, and it was exciting to find um, a publisher that was excited about my work in the like silly fantasy way um, uh, that I like. and. So I really I looked at a bunch of other work that Piao had done for this one just to see for like the paper and the quality that I wanted. Um, I had seen a bunch of other books that were maybe like a lot thicker in the cover and a lot thicker paper inside, and I was like I just want something really simple that feels um, like light and clean and like easy to flip through. Um, and I think I told you guys about it. I was like this is what I want mm -hmm. and nothing else, and this is it. Um, and yeah, the interior is uh, just without the yellow. So um, again, with the blue, I haven't. I just realized like with all my work together, it's you just too much blue. Blue, some blue. Uh, um, yeah. My hair. Well, it was blue. Oh, my hair. I'm putting my hair. Okay, fuck it. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was. It was my first um, big project doing like. Uh, two color and like making sure that things looked like the orange and the the blue didn't look like a too ugly brown together. Um, I yeah um, spent a long time like with the the levels in Photoshop like <laughs> trying to find um, yeah the w how the orange would react to the blue and yeah, it's a little hard to estimate. It is hard to estimate, especially because I didn't know the colors that especially that they had yeah. like. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Kind of, were, that was before. We were overseas, yeah, and so you were like sending us stuff from. Yeah, the US. yeah. I was living in New York and uh, sending the stuff to Sweden, and they were. I remember there was, there was one time where it was like 10 a.m. and I was like, I'll get it to you today, and I got it to them at 10 a.m. and they were like, We're done. We stopped printing today because it's already like 6 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Fuck. <laughs> like yeah. that was bad. I forgot the everything yeah. <laughs> about the world it's at that point. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks again for printing that. I'm I'm very proud of that. Thank book. you for yeah. making yeah. it. Yeah. We're, we're very proud of <laughs> it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 
Okay, next we're going to uh, move to Chris Mackay. So Chris, um, Chris is an uh, artist and illustrator, cartoonist living in Burbank, California. Um, Chris went to school at Pratt, um, focused on illustration there. He's done a lot of great mini comics since, and is also a, a storyboard artist. I, I, th I think I heard you're working for Adventure Time. Is that correct? I'm a perfectionist, uh, and I work on Wee Bear Bears. Okay, great. <laughs> but I ha actually, I have done boards for Adventure Time. Okay. But like last year. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's <about> <laughs> Great. Well, um, yeah. the, nec the first publication from Chris we're going to talk about is called Commuter. So Commuter is, um, again, a risograph, 32-page. Um, uh, let's see, two color, red and black. Um, and this is half letter. Um, so yeah, Chris, tell us a little bit more about, about this one. Uh, well, wait, this is half letter also? Yeah. OK. Well, yours is like a little small. smaller. I, trimmed, oh yeah. I like never trim my books. That's nice. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I like this book because I don't trim it, and the pages on the inside are bright red. So <laughs> it looks cool on the side. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of red going on in this book. After I printed it, I was like, my eyes really hurt. <laughs> it's like really bright red and it scans terribly so did you do tests of how the red would react on the red paper yeah I was like yeah. I was like it looks great and then like I printed all of it and I was like maybe I <laughs> <laughs> thought about this a little bit more <laughs> uh, but yeah um, and I have red staples also I love making <laughs> the staples colors but these are like just like really crappy uh, st staples from staples. <laughs> <laughs> but they're really crappy, so they like flake off and they get everywhere. Um, I just brought this as a comparison, even though you can't see it because they're <laughs> very small. But these are much nicer staplers from someplace else. <laughs> but these are like the wire is actually like. And like you could get them in red as well at the other place? Yeah, well, the ones from Staplers, they have like red and green and blue. Mm -hmm. And then you can get some like really nice Japanese ones. Mm -hmm. If you have like a small Japanese stapler, like they're different sizes. And then this, I issue press printed this, so I don't know where he gets the staplers. I think he literally just like bought coiled wire and put oh. it into like a Whoa. big machine. Wow. I feel mm -hmm. like that's what that's it cool. is, but I didn't ask. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what else to say about this book. It has <laughs> red pages on the inside because it's so so much anxiety, and it makes and, it, and, it, and it's it, good. It hurts everybody's eyes a little bit when they read just it. Just like the subway, though. <laughs> just like the subway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and um, maybe we should mention this is a. Uh, it's all about public transportation and the terrible things that can happen there. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes. <purple>. Such as <laughs> this happened to my roommate uh, she came home and was like so I was on the train and there was some water on the train and I sat down and then this old lady was like dabbing it and it was yellow and now I'm gonna go take a shower <laughs> and that was that was like freshman year and then I never forgot about it this this comic is like traumatizing four years of or six years or something of just like being on the train <laughs> and trying to get places that we live. It's got trains, got buses, it's got biking. I feel like I think everybody. about that book every day. I'm on the train. I see the butt. I see the butt. Yeah, pole. definitely. Think so of. Much. I've seen this. I saw this the other day. Yeah. <laughs> Once you see it, you never it. stop seeing. It. <laughs> Another thing I won't stop seeing is people cutting their nails on the subway. Yep. <gasps> You hear right? <laughs> their toenails. I feel like you hear it before you see it. Yeah, I know I, the sound. And you're like, I don't believe it. You're like, not <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, d uh, one last word I like to say about this book is um, just a choice of like red paper or red staples. That's not a, that isn't a. It's a lot easier than having to do another pass of ink. It's like a really s just you're just putting a different color of paper in the machine. So, but it can really make a difference. So next, we're going to talk about um, Raised by Goblins. This is a 20-page Rizzo, two-color. It's smaller, it's a qu quarter letter. Um, yeah, so Chris, what can you tell us about this one? Yeah, this is 
a much smaller book, and again, it's I don't trim these, so it's cool when the purple paper sure. shows through on the inside. Um, I can I picked this because uh, the paper that I used is also like really nostalgic because it was for a project that a friend and I did like in college, and I just held on to the extra paper, and I was like, I gotta use this paper for something. So I finally. I hold on to like all of the leftover paper and it's super hard to find another use for just like half of a ream of paper. But for this one it worked out so I was like, yes, I can reuse that paper. <laughs> also I like it because uh, it's like teal ink on purple and it makes like this weird gray color which I thought was cool. Is the line work also teal? The line work is black. Yeah. Right, and let's, you want to move on to the next one, which is we're going to do Weeping Flower Grows in Darkness. So that's a 28-page risograph. Um, this one has quite a lot of colors. It's four-color, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like two-color, but then half, it like starts out green, and then halfway it goes to purple. So, like, signatures isn't the right word, but like, it's almost like different signatures of color. Like Yeah, the, yeah. Thankfully, it's like even pages, I think, so it wasn't a huge pain to print. Oh wait, no, I was wrong. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this page was really hard to print because it's like four colors, <laughs> and I had to change the drums, and it was hard, <laughs> but I did it, and it was good. Yeah, like we we had said before, like four colors unless you have this new fancy machine that does two at a time, like it needs the paper going through four times. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I printed this on a machine that does one color at a time, so it was like, oh my god. I was like, I have to put this through again. You should dry it. Yeah, you have to like dry it. Yeah, and one thing I have to, it, does, it doesn't dry 100% ever, right? It like you does. can, yeah. if you rub your finger against it, you might get some, some blue might come off. If Probably you're like sweating. Some, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like at the end of a show, after like handing people books, I'm always like, I got, like, can't touch face. anything. Uh, yeah, this has purple staplers. Oh no, wait, they're blue. They're not flaking as much as the other ones. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Okay, that's that's great. Thank, thanks, Chris. And. Last, we're going to uh, talk to Patrick and Elliot. So Patrick and Elliot came all the way from Sweden. They are two thirds of Piao Studios. I, I came from Sweden. Patrick oh, oh, lives here. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't oh, know that, Patrick. Man. <laughs> You're ruining the illusion. But I got <laughs> International guests, oh, come on. I got to say, Patrick, I've been impressed about how many American comic conventions you've been coming to. I was like, wow. <laughs> 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 So are you, you're, are you the American third? Yeah, oh, okay. I'm in the USA HQ in New Jersey. <laughs> oh. Jersey City. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, they um, are part of Piao Studios, um, and they're a publisher, um, both located in Stockholm, Sweden, and New Jersey. <laughs> um, they, they put, so as publishers, they put out, they're all, all of them are artists, all, all, all three who, who work for Piao, but they also put out work of, of different artists. Um, um, artists in Sweden, but also um, international artists, French artists, American artists. Um, they publish exclusively in English, and um, they make just a lot of a lot of great books. Um, they started printing uh, with Rezo. They got their own Rezo machine, um, taught themselves how to use it, and now uh, have branched out to also um, printing books um, offset. Is that, that's 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 sort of a new new development. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're gonna show. Um, some Rizzo and some Offset here. So the, the first slide, okay, this one is called The Nature of Nature by Diza yeah. Wallander. Yeah, um, this was one of our Rizzo books when we still, because we kind of stopped doing Rizzo graph now, um, but this was one of them. And yeah, it's all printed in teal and orange, uh, which was like what she wanted when we did it. And uh, yeah, so the artist is uh, Disa Valander. She's a Swedish artist that we worked with. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah, uh, Elliot was like the main editor, like helping with the book production on this. Yeah, yeah. She, um, Disa usually does like little uh, kind of comic strips, kind of like this, like one, one or two, like. And then um, she started sending in this stuff instead, which is just kind of like abstract. Uh, uh, people cool. can see. Yeah. Where it's like no panels, it's like blurry stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, huh, okay, so that's what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, and then she started sending in this stuff as well, and we were like, okay, so what is this like a story? And then we really worked re really closely together to make it like a, a cohesive story, uh, and it was a lot of fun to do, uh, working really closely with the artists and the editor, I guess. Yeah. And uh, the size is. Well, it's a square. It's a square. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I mean, th I don't really know about like letter <laughs> sizes and stuff. I didn't <laughs> Because we have the A sizes in Europe, and that's so easy. Yeah. But it's also really like it's the common sizes that are really boring, and we started printing all our books in like A5, which is like um, standard so size. Yeah, I think a lot of the sizes we use with the risograph are based on how many pages we can get out of a mm. sheet of paper. So we're not going to do a size where it's like, oh, we'll have a bunch of blank space on a paper. We just try to maximize the amount of printing per paper. So the optimal thing is printing on a tabloid size, right? And then you have one, two, three, four pages um, on one side and then four on the other. Uh, and that way you get eight pages per one sheet of paper. And that's like the best way. And you try to work in multiples of four. For a lot of the smaller books, that's like what comes into our mind. That's why we have certain page amounts and certain page sizes is just because of the limitations of the printer. Mm -hmm. Um, for this square, it means that we had a lot of dead space on the paper, but also the square let us, the dead space lets us print really heavy inks because it's like letting us have a lot of like extra room so it won't mess up the printer. So it was a lot harder to print. We had to use a lot more paper, but we were able to print like really heavy inks. And uh, the square shape is like sort of the artist's idea. Yeah. Um, and another thing with the risograph, I think that all of us, we know, but I don't think we talked about it, but it's the paper quality, and you have to use uncoated paper. And this is a thing that is really nice. Like, if you go to digital printing, a lot of times you'll get, like, a glossy paper. You don't have a choice. Um, they'll just give you the glossy paper, and you don't think about it. And most floppy comic books or full-color comics are on glossy paper. Um, but the uncoated paper has this really nice feel. It has, like, a paperback, kind of, like, old, vintage -y, Just, like, it feels better in your hands. Or that's and what we... Yeah, 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 you guys definitely. laminated this cover, right? Yeah, yeah. Because the we have to laminate it. So soft. Yeah, the cover on this is it's laminated so because, like you were explaining earlier, Robin, with the the Rizzo ink, it really it doesn't dry. Dries. Yeah. And this is one of like the last Rizzo books that we made, and we started to be like, well, the books are always so messy, and it's like it sucks. So yeah, we every time we went to like conventions anywhere, we had them like stacked on top of each other, and they like, when we started putting on the table, it was like, oh, it's all just mm -hmm. dirty because it, they rubbed off on each other. But then again, it's like everything, every time you make a book, you have choices for everything. So even if you're printing on paper or uncoated paper, like there are different uncoated papers. And the same thing with the lamination. If you just go and say like laminate it, they're gonna give you a glossy lamination. But like do your research and like checking things out, like oh, what type of laminate can we use? And this is a, a rubber matte gloss, um, which is not glossy, but it's like a rubber matte lamination, which has this like weird rubbery, soft, smooth feel. That feels like a boner. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels cool. I did cool. not say that. <laughs> I was going to say, like, that. oh, you're such a good teacher right now. And wow. then you said that. <laughs> no. so um, but yeah. So, but this is like, yeah, cool, cool, fun reason of book. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, um, it was a fun book to make, yeah. On a practical level, how does one get something laminated? What? How does that actually work? No idea. We, we <laughs> handed it in to the <laughs> people. Because we, I mean, at first when yeah, we did books, we uh, we bound them all ourselves. <laughs> like, I, be, I mean, you stapled it all yourself, right? Yeah, but yeah. I don't make, my editions are usually pretty small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so this was 350 yeah. we made. Uh, as so our, like, uh, editions started growing, we realized that, like, oh, we can't do this on our own. It's too much work. Uh, so we started handing it in to, like, a, just a place that bound them. And they did such a much better the job than we did, like cutting the pages and everything was square and like stuff like that. And they also just, we were like, can you laminate it? And they said, yeah, so. <laughs> nice, nice. It worked out. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Yeah, because we also had like, before we did that, we went to like a small 
printing place and they were like, yeah, we can help you out by binding your books. And then we did like one edition, bound them with their machines and they were like, you can't use this anymore because you ruined our machines. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, there was like blue ink on. all over the machine <laughs> and they had to like clean it out and it was like a brand new machine for them and they're like, yeah, you can't do it yeah. again. Oh, yeah. oh gosh. So, yeah. Uh, moving on, we have um, The World by Valentine Fish. Fish? Yeah. Val so Valentine. So, or Valentine. <laughs> so it, the, it was, yeah. But mm -hmm. anyway, so this is a really interesting book. So this is a book that we started making for Rizograph. We started developing it for Rizograph. And the artist, he's like, well, I want to use your federal blue, which is a dark blue, and I want to use blue, and I want to use red. And we're like, OK. So he's making all of his artwork to be for the Rizograph. And it was around this point we were like, well, we want to make more books, and we don't want to print them because you know, the Rizograph is a machine that if it breaks, and in Sweden, it's really hard for us to get a hold of parts a lot harder than here in the US. So we're like, if this breaks, like we can't, you know, we can't fix it. And it would suck if it breaks in the middle of a print run. So we decided to go to Offset and we were like, hey Valentin, do you want your book to be the first Offset book that we make? And he's like, yes, I would be honored. <laughs> um, so we did this. And the thing that's really cool is if you have this background sort of in uh, Rizograph and you kind of understand how it works, you can apply these same techniques to Offset printing. So instead of going to an offset printer and being like, here's my book, it's a lot of colors, if you just send them this, they're just going to print it in four colors if you don't specify and you don't set up your work for, for it. So this is actually three specific spot colors that are based on the Rizograph colors. And it's, so it's, it's Pantone based. And, um, and we told them, like, use these three colors. And we had no idea what it was going to look like. And it was our first time doing this. And we were like, oh, really, really noobs. But uh, it worked. It worked like better than we can imagine. And Did they send you a test? Did they send you a no? Proof? We no. don't do oh. tests. We just, just send them the yeah. files and be like, print it. Whoa. Yeah, yeah okay. we're really, <laughs> really bad. risky <laughs> like that. <laughs> risky, risky business. But it's like but we learn from Rizograph. Like you have to do that. You you can't uh, print something and then be like, oh wait, I want to change something because you you have to print it all in one go and you can't go back unless you're really rich and you have lots of paper to waste and time. So I don't know. We just had the same same influence with making offset books. Is just we'll make it and send it off, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's like we were really specific about the papers. There's papers that we found that we couldn't use in the Rizograph that we wanted to test. So this is used. With, it's actually the same type of paper that you find in paperback books, which is this really nice, pulpy, cheap, old manga feeling paper. And I really wanted that in the book. Uh, and we were able to convince the printers, and they're like, are you sure you want this paper? This is really like not for comics or pictures. And we're like, yes, use the paper. And <laughs> <laughs> and Still like, not hey, knowing how we would look, just no. going with it. Going on our gut instincts. Yeah. They, were and like, yeah. they were like trying to, to help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always. Like, and, and one thing I'll add is, um, this came with, with some oh extras, yeah. uh, some stickers and a print. <laughs> yeah, so we still do the Rizograph stuff. Um, so this came with Rizograph prints on the side, which are like extra character cards. And the stickers are inspired by like these candies that you could get with random stickers. And you, you don't know what you would get. So you can put them in the book, you know, like kids' books, sort of like this, where you collect them and you can trade with your cool kid friends. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons that we kind of started doing offset is, as well is because we wanted the like straight backs mm -hmm. because the you the can't really band. you can't really get that with Risograph. Well, you can, but it's so much work because usually, as Patrick said, you try to get as many pages as possible on like one A3, and when you because we did this book with this with the same author, which has the straight back is Riso printed, two colors, uh, ninety pages or something. Yeah. And then we were like, we're going to bind it at your place, and we want the straight back. And then we're like, well, you can't print it like that then. You have to print the same same picture like next to each other, and then hand in like each book already like made up to be yeah. a book. So it's like you have a stack of like page stack. one, page two, page three, page four, all the way up to 90, and then they cut that stack yeah. and then glue it. That's how they make the book. Yeah. Instead of folding the book like this, uh, like a booklet, and stapling it, which is a lot more efficient. Yeah. This is like really. So we had to bribe all our friends to like come help us like sort it all into books <laughs> for like an entire day. It was horrible. And then we were like, offset printing, we could just do that. Yeah. 
Which is a really an kind of an economic decision as well, because bookshops don't want the the other sort of like most bookshops don't yeah. really want the the like folded staple the stuff. Like they well, we staples. want the back, otherwise yeah. you colored staples. No, yeah. thank you. So moving on, um, this last one is by Patrick, um, Internal Affair number three. It's a uh, it's quite long, 192 pages, um, <laughs> and this is also uh, offset and uh, four color on the cover, two color colors inside, right? Yeah. So this is that book, um, and yeah, it's two colors. And I did the first two books, um, or it's like books with the same character and the same title, uh, but. Um, the first two I did on Rizograph, and I wanted to work in the same style, so I did it in the same style. And a lot of the thing with the Rizograph is that you can't really test what it's going to look like unless you spend time printing out tests. So a lot of times, like we were still learning, and we would experiment, and we would just like print stuff just to see what it would look like when it comes out. And I did the same kind of mindset making this book that I would just draw pages without kind of looking at what the colors would look like. I mean, like, we're still learning offset, so, you know, we might as well see what it looks like in offset. And I have a bunch of panels to experiment with, you know? Um, if one panel... You never told me this. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were, like, yeah. getting the coolest thing. <laughs> no, but, uh, I, yeah, I lied. Yeah. Or, <laughs> um, it's been horrible. Yeah, but I think that that is, like, a, it's a really fun way to work with books because I think that you shouldn't have to have this limit of, like, being like, okay, it has to be super perfect because you know, like, if there's like a blooper in a movie, it's like, whatever, it doesn't ruin the whole experience, and it's, you know, we're trying new special effects, um, but yeah, so so it's the book is pretty much set up the way we would do any risograph book, but again, it's like we can use the same techniques and move them to offset, and it really is cool that, I don't know, just having that type of freedom um, instead of just. If we just went straight to offset from the start, I don't think we would have ever known that we could do these kind of things, yeah. um, or we would be really confused and not like know how to go about it. But um, it is a lot more fun, and just like being able to experiment with stuff is is a lot of what we do. And the same thing with papers and formats. It's like we want to try new things that we haven't seen before because you know it's it's cool if it can stick out and just be weird. Yeah. Yeah. I guess one thing I'd I'd, I'd like to ask, or, or I kind of know the answer, but I want I wanted to bring it up, is some people might be wondering, well, if we can do the same thing with offset, why don't we just go to offset? Oh. Um, but with offset, you do have to create these plates, and it really doesn't make sense financially unless you're really printing a thousand or so. Yeah. yeah. Like, when we started, we were making editions of 50 for our first books, and then, like, we went up. And I think when we were at this point when we were making between 500 to 1,000 of a Rizzo book, that was sort of when we were feeling like this is too much for the risograph. We need to go to offset, and offset is like usually a thousand, like a minimum print run of a thousand for offset is like pretty good. And like the printers will be like happy to work with you. There's some printers that maybe if you go less than a thousand, they'll be like, okay, we'll do it, but it's really expensive. Um, but yeah, so we were at that point where like it made sense. But like when we first started doing small editions, that's why Rizzo is so cool because you can use the you can make it look really cool. Like we're making offset stuff look like Rizzo because we like <laughs> the Rizzo so much, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense starting out just working in in Rizograph because you can you can do so many, so you can do all that experimentation on mm -hmm. a budget instead of just going to the ZRX machine and being like, all right, I have this black. Yeah, you might you might not be at a place where you know, okay, I have a, you know a couple thousand dollars saved up, I can print my comic might be like, I have a couple hundred dollars up, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like a hundred dollars. <laughs> Even with the Rizzo, <laughs> it's cool because yeah. like you have so much more control so you can put in weird papers and weird colors. Like it's a lot harder for us now to be like, okay, we want the these two pages in the middle of the book to be on red paper. Like we can't really do that with a printing place. Um, we haven't asked, but it's like, it's one of those like annoying questions. Probably could, but it would be <laughs> yeah. a lot more expensive. Yeah, and, and they, and they might make some rules or whatever. Like you have to do 15 red pages in a row. Those boys. But for Rizzo, you guys can do that. Like, and using scrap papers and stuff like with, with your book, Chris, it's like, that's the best. Yeah. You only pay with your time. Yeah. With your back. So true. So true. Sweat a lot of tears. Um, I, I would like to open up the floor to maybe just one or two qu questions. We don't have a lot of time, but um, if anybody has a question, either yell it out and I'll repeat it, or if you can get to one of the microphones on the side, that'd be great for the folks that are recording this. 
So, so any um, questions for the panelists? Hello. Hey. Hi, yes, I made it. <laughs> I, um, I was wondering that uh, when you guys were, or all of you, but especially Piao, when you guys had like limited runs, it'd only be like 50. But obviously as a business, you want to get it to more than 50 people. Even though like the uh, Rizzo graph and like all of like, you know, your comics are very special and you want to have a physical copy, what, how were you still able to, I guess, advertise it, market it, and um, show it to people greater than just like the limited run? I mean, when, when we started with Risograph, when we did like, our first book we did was 40 copies, I think. 40, 50 copies. Um, we weren't really planning on like making a living during, during just like publishing books. Uh, because we started out as illustration, like just illustrating stuff. We still do, but, and um, so we just kind of made it to really buy more drums and stuff. Uh, and we sold that off and we bought more drums and it started feeling like as we went up in additions and the audience slowly grew, uh, we realized that it was more and more like viable, financially viable to like just publish books. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, it always feels weird now that like to have so many books that are sold out and will be sold out forever, you know? Yeah. And we get a lot of questions about that. It's like, will you reprint it? No. <laughs> because it's too much work. But uh, do you have, I guess, like a, a digital version? Like, or would that even yeah, of some, of some books we do, yeah. Yeah, I guess, or of yeah. some financial books, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to ask a question to Marcus Stella, because you mentioned that you work on uh, digital media. Um, so the, the original book, the original book, or the digital book? And I'll just repeat that for the folks that are recording. Um, our panelists, do you work with um, traditional media or digital media? I think we all start out drawing traditionally, but we have to like upload it digitally in order to print. So it just becomes a, a combination of both. When, um, when we were using like your scanner or your printer, you could only scan on the bed. We didn't hadn't you hadn't like hooked up your computer oh yeah, to it yet. That was yeah. So that was a thing. <laughs> but so we were <laughs> still like printing, printing the masters the, yeah. like from the Staples. computer Prince. and then scanning it onto the scanner bed. So it was like a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> like but that's like a high. thing with Riso as well, because every, you always buy them used. So yeah. every Riso graph is like special in their own way, you're like, <laughs> horrible way. You're like, <laughs> what's this one going to yeah. be like? <laughs> what neat tricks are you have yeah. up your sleeve? What delicate baby are you? Yeah. But you can, so there, I mean, you can do go straight from a traditional drawing uh, and then just scan it onto the Riso scanner if you really wanted to. There but it, it would be hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm always like, I need to scan this and then fix this part <laughs> that I yeah. uh, drew wrong. There was a cool workshop at SBA this uh, summer that one of the other residents uh, was doing, artist in residence was doing. She had um, figure drawing come in, or fig people come in to, and they did figure drawing, um, mm -hmm. and then just scanned those figure drawings onto the scanning oh. bed, and then did two different <coughs> colors. Yeah, the artist, yeah. by the way, is named Tu Tran, yes. and we're releasing a book with her in yeah. less than a month. <laughs> and that book is like all uh, analog. Oh, she just Wait, does it traditionally. What do you mean? Yeah, just like drawn on paper, and scanned. And scanned on the scanning bed, or well, not on? In, it's into it's a computer. It's just scanned in. And oh, okay. It's not yeah, I have to Photoshop do plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I yeah. think we cool. have time for maybe one more question. Any questions out there? Oh, up here. a big fan of Becky Cloonan. She used <coughs> to go to anime conventions with zines and stuff, and I'd be like, I want to do that. <laughs> and then I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm here. <laughs> For us, I think it was the other way around, that we were like, oh, we really don't want to do these <laughs> like photocopied or yeah. like yeah. Yeah. printed zines anymore. Because we started with that, and that was like, like a couple of copies and like oh no this is horrible why did we do this yeah it was like learning yeah. what i so. hate it was like i i don't like this yeah and yeah finding a way around yeah. that yeah i have a hate <laughs> not really just <laughs> frustration <laughs> uh, yeah 
Yeah, I remember though finding uh, like our first like experience seeing risograph stuff was this thickness oh, yeah. anthology, and yeah. that was the first thing I saw. And we were like, "What is a risograph? <laughs> Let's get one." <laughs> um, but yeah, I know like especially it was like that book, and then seeing no bra books in the beginning was like, "Okay, this is the stuff we want to make." Mm. Um, yeah. 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 I feel like mine, like looking Thanks. at. Thanks so much, guys. Oh, we need thank to you. move on to the next. But thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for having us.